So in this example here, we are solving for the x value in one period of this function. So first thing I'm going to do, since it's a quadratic, I've got a squared here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make this equal to 0, and then factor this. So I end up with sine x, sorry, sine squared x minus sine x cosine x is equal to 0. And if it's equal to 0, I can then factor and get solu independent solutions for each factor. So sine x times sine x gives me the sine squared x minus cos x is equal to 0. So one solution is going to be based on this sine x. I'm going to solve that right now. So I get sine x equal to 0. Well, I know sine x is equal to 0. Sine is horizontal. Sorry, sine is vertical. And sine is equal to 0. The vertical position is equal to 0 on these two parts of the, of the circle. So I know that x is equal to 0 and pi over 2. Now they have repetitions, but the but my period is just going to be for one circle. So those are two, two of my solutions. So I need to also get solutions for this. Now this is a little bit tricky in that I need to know when sine x is equal to cos x. Well, we can kind of make some judgments on that in that when is the sine or vertical same as the horizontal cos? Well, that's going to be at 45 degrees. Okay, that will be at 45 degrees or pi over 4, and it's going to be on the opposite side of the circle. So when I draw my picture out here, so I'm going to get cos x is equal to sine x. Well, the cos x is equal to sine x. The horizontal is equal to the vertical at those two points on the circle. Okay, so my vertical and horizontal components are going to be the same at 45 degrees. Now I can also solve this algebraically. So if I try to solve this algebraically, it's going to look like this. So first of all, I'm just going to write my answer in. x is equal to pi over 4 and 5 pi over 4. That's going to be the, the angle in quadrant 3. But I could also solve this algebraically. If I make, if I divide both sides by cosine, so I get sine x over cos x. And really what that sine x over cos x is, is tan. And I can just solve for when tan is equal to 1. So tan is equal to 1. The slope is equal to 1 at along that line. So tan is equal to 1 along a slope 1 line. It's going to be in at that 45 degree point and that 225 degree point or pi over 4 by pi over 4. So that can be solved algebraically as well, not just using some reasoning, but algebraically by converting that into a tan. And we need to be able to convert that into one function to be able to actually undo that function. So example two, you've been given that sine x is negative 7 over 8. Okay, so we know that sine is vertical, so we know that this component here, that negative 7, represents a vertical component, so it's down. And it tells us it's in between pi over pi and 3 pi over 2. Well, that's going to be in this quadrant here. Okay, because pi, there's my pi. There's my pi here, and 3 pi over 2 is in here. So we need to determine the exact value of cosine. Okay, actually, I'm going to use a diff that I wrote down x, but the x is actually representing the angle, so I really should change that variable. I'm going to change that variable to a. So I'm going to calculate a. So when I calculate a, I'm going to use Pythagoras. So I'm going to do 64 minus 49. That's going to give me 15. It's going to give me square root 15. Now I have to be careful because a is going to the left, so that negative is very important. 
So I'm going to highlight that negative here. Okay, that negative is very important to keep track of. So now that I have the horizontal component, I can now write the value of the cosine. So cosine of x, cos x, is then going to be equal to the horizontal component, negative root 15, over the hypotenuse, which is, or the radius, which is 8. Okay, so that's my value of cosine in quadrant 3. For example 3 here, what we're doing, what we want to do is we want to have a generalized expression for sine of some angle x plus pi over 2. And that generalized expression needs to be in terms of sine x and or cos x. So this is where we can use a formula. We actually have a formula for this. So our formula looks like this. This is a sine of alpha plus beta or a plus b. It's going to be sine alpha cos beta plus sine beta cosine alpha. Okay, so we could use a formula to do this. And where we can just, as long as we can identify my alpha is my x, my beta is my pi over 2. So those are going to involve beta. These are going to involve alpha. Okay, well, I can't figure out sine of alpha. Okay, we, we don't, sorry, we can't, we're not going to find sine of x. So first I'm going to write that in terms of x. So sine x we don't know. Okay, that's just some general, some unknown point. It could be anywhere on the circle. And then we have cosine of beta, which is going to be pi over 2. Use cosine, cosine of beta, which is pi over 2. That we do know. Okay, cosine pi over 2 is a known quantity. Sine beta is going to be sine pi over 2. Again, that is a known quantity. And then our cosine alpha is going to be cosine alpha was our x value. So it's going to be cosine of x. Okay, again, that's a general point that could be anywhere. So simplifying this, what we end up with is sine x. Well, the cosine value at pi over 2, that's going to be straight up. That's going to be at the very top. The x value at the vertical position is going to be 0. Okay, so if I were to imagine what that looks like, at this point pi over 2, the horizontal position is 0. Plus sine pi over 2, well, that's the same position. Now the vertical position is going to be 1. And then we end up with cosine of x. Simplifying this, we're just left with cosine of x. So if I start with some angle x and I add 90 degrees to it, the sine value or the vertical component is going to be the same as the initial horizontal component. So what does that look like when we draw this out? So this can be done algebraically. We can also do this in the standard position circle. So if I start with some general point x, that angle x gives me this triangle. Okay, I've got that triangle here. And the new position is going to have, be in the blue position when I add pi over 2. So as I add pi over 2, I'm now located in this position. And what I'm looking for is a vertical component. The vertical. Oops. I'm looking for the vertical here of that blue position. Okay, The sine value is the vertical position. Well, that vertical position happens to be the exact same as the original horizontal position. Okay, so this horizontal position length here now shows up as a vertical length here. So the cosine value of angle x then represents the sine value of angle x plus 90 degrees. So as I add 90 degrees, I'm going to draw my triangle out here. This length here is the same as the cosine x that we had here. So this is going to be, oops, I need to just change that, sorry. 
that so, that sine of I'm going to write this this way. This is cosine x. And that's also equivalent to the sine of that position. The sine of that position. I'm going to make that equal. The sine of that position is going to be sine of the original value x plus pi over 2. So sine of x plus pi over 2 is equivalent to the cosine x because those lengths are exactly the same.